Today, we're building something every app needs, a way to connect with your users through email. We'll use Recent, the developer-first email platform, together with Expo and EIS Hosting to send secure, reliable emails all from your application. Recent makes it easy to send transactional and marketing emails, and with audiences, you can manage your contacts directly perfect for newsletters, waiting lists, or event signoffs. And with EAS hosting, you can call the recent API securely from your backend. You don't need to expose your secret keys or set up your own server. So in this video, we'll go from creating a recent API key, adding it safely to your project, testing locally, and deploying it to EAS hosting. By the way, in case you didn't know, Expo isn't just for building your app's frontend. It's actually a full stack framework that lets you write server-side code too, which is really useful for scenarios like this one. We'll finish with a fully working example that lets users subscribe to your mailing list with a single tap. The example is open source and you can find it in the description, ready to use on iOS, Android, and web. Let's dive in. So this is the app that we are going to be working on. It's a pretty cool Expo app that works everywhere. And it just gets the email of the user. At the moment, it doesn't have the functionality. It's just the input. But when you enter something here, we need to add the user to our newsletter or audiences. So to get started, you're going to need a recent account and you are going to need as well an Expo account to deploy your API. Once you have these two accounts, we can go ahead and start implementing this. So first of all, I want to go ahead and go to my dashboard screen here. This is how recent dashboard looks like. So at the moment, I don't have anything. This is pretty much empty. But on the left, you can see that we have audiences. Audiences basically are list of contacts that we want to send emails. This is perfect for marketing, newsletters, and stuff like that. Something really cool about recent is that you can just press this button and it's going to let you know how you can use it. So first of all, you are going to need a recent API and then you're going to need as well the audience ID. So in this case, this is my audience ID and we're going to be using this in a moment, but let's get our API key. So on the left, I'm going to click on API keys and then you can press on create an API key, give it a name here and then click on add, you can select full access or just sending access, depending on what you want to do. But in this case, I'm going to select full access, then let's press add. And this is going to give me a new API key. Of course, we want to be careful with this. We don't want to either share it or commit it to GitHub. And on top of that, you don't want to use this API key on the client side code. This is for server side only. So let's copy this value. We're going to need it in a moment. I'm going to close this. Now I'm here in my Expo project. And if you haven't already, go ahead and create a .env.local file and add your recent API key. This example comes with this env.local example. You can just replace this value with your API key value. Now just make sure that this .env.local file is ignore. You can double check that by going to your .gitignore file. And down here, you're going to see that this file is being ignored, meaning that if I push this code, it's not going to include this file. Okay, perfect. Now, another thing to mention is that when you're using environment variables with Expo, you might have also seen that you can also prefix these environment variables by saying Expo public. Now, since this API key is going to be used only on their server side, we don't want to be exposing this to the client. So it's going to be just called recent API key. Okay, so add the value and then let's close this file. All right, once we have our API key, we can go ahead and open a new terminal and let's install the recent SDK by saying npx expo install recent and hit enter. There we go. Now let's double check that in our package JSON. Here it is. So this is the recent version that I'm going to be using. Now keep in mind that this is a server side package. So we're going to be using this in an Expo API route. So I'm using Expo Router. As you can see here, the layout is super simple. Just the index screen and the form screen, which is this screen that you can see here. This is the form and just an input and a button. OK, so that's my form. Now let's create an API route. In case you didn't know, Expo Router allows you to have server side code. And I'm going to add 
all these API routes inside this API folder. So let's create a new file and I'm going to call it audience. When you are creating APIs, in order for Expo Router to know that this is an API, you have to say plus API and then .ts. Now the code that I'm going to put inside this file is going to live on the server. So we're going to be handling a post request from the client that is going to be sending the email. So let's create a post handler here. By the way, if you want to learn more about API routes, I'm going to leave the link to this doc in the description so that you can learn more. But you can basically have any kind of handlers like post, get, and stuff like that. Okay, and I almost forgot, we also need to set the output to server in our app JSON. Now, before I do that, I want to copy a post request example so that I don't have to do it manually. Okay, let's copy this one. Let's go back to our handler and paste this in here. So this is how we can handle a request, a post request. Of course, I need to add some JSON here. Let's go to the app JSON. Let's search for outputs. Right now is static, as you can see here. Let's change this to be server. And by the way, if you're wondering how I am getting these highlights on this JSON, uh, this is working because I have this extension called Expo Tools. So if you install it on VS Code, you should be able to get highlight when you are typing on your app.json. Pro tip. So now I have my handler and I added the required configuration. Now let's restart the server to make sure that everything is working fine. I'm going to say npx expo start. Hit enter. Awesome. Let's reload the app. I'm using expo go by the way to keep things simple and the app still works. Awesome. I'm going to be sending the user email in the body. So we can actually do something like email and we can abstract this from the body of the request. And then we can maybe put in the console just to make sure that this is working. And I'm going to say server just so that we know that this is coming from the server. Cool. Now let's hit this API from the client side. So at the moment, I'm running the application in the local host 8081. But it's a good idea to abstract this endpoint in your end file. So let's do that. I'm going to go to my end.local. And in here, I'm going to create a new variable. Now, since this endpoint needs to be accessed from the client side code, I'm going to prefix this with expo public. And then let's call it base URL. This is going to be equal to, at the moment, localhost. Okay, so let's paste this in here. And let's close this. So I have here my handle submit function just has a couple of validations. We need to make sure that we have an email. Otherwise, we are going to be showing this alert. And then at the moment, we are hard coding this alert with the success. OK, so let's do the fetch request here. Let's hit our endpoint. In this case, we can access this by saying process dot end dot. Now, this is yelling at me because this could be null, but I'm going to be using the exclamation point because I know that this variable is going to be present. Now, we can define some options for the request, like the method is going to be post, and then we can pass the body, which is going to be the email. Now, we need to say JSON dot stringify. It's safe. And we also need to send a response so once we get the response, we are going to say console log client response. You can have other validation here, like if response is not OK, maybe here we can say, I don't know, console log something went wrong. After this if statement, I'm going to say const data equal to response await response.json and data is the thing that I want to put in the console. So at the moment, actually on the server, we are not returning anything, but we can return something like success equal to true at this point. I'm going to send my email and at this moment, we are getting this weird error. The reason for that is because we are actually hitting the wrong endpoint. I'm going to wrap it like this slash API slash audience. That's the URL that we want to hit. So let's pass the URL path here and let's try this again. 
I'm going to continue. Awesome. And now we get the response and the log from the server. Cool. So we are getting the email and on the client, we are getting the success equal to true. Now you can change the response if you want to, but at this point, we are ready to call recent on the server side. Here in the audiences, I'm going to press on this API and let's copy this. I'm going to copy the entire thing. Let's go in here and let's paste it in here. So we need our recent API key. If you remember, we already have this in our environment variables. So let's say process.end.recent. It's a good idea to just copy the name, recent API key. Paste it in here. Now let's call it in here. Okay, I'm going to remove the console for now. And then of course you can pass more information like the first name and last name. I'm going to hard code this for now. And the email is going to be this one right here. So of course, it's a good idea to validate if we don't have an email, maybe return a response, different response. Just to keep things simple, I'm going to say success equal to false, right? If we don't have an email. For this example, we are going to keep things simple. We are not going to be verifying the user's email before adding it to the audience. But in a real world application, you definitely want to confirm the email first, either by sending a verification link or by adding the contact only after the user is authenticated. If you'd like to learn more about best practices, check out the audience hygiene guide in the recent documentation. It covers things like double opt-in, preventing spam, and maintaining a healthy sender reputation. Otherwise, I'm going to create it. Now, this is my audience ID. Unsubscribe equal to false. This is because we are creating a contact and you can imagine that you can update a contact here just by accessing these methods. I get, list, remove, update. But in this case, we can just create this user. So let's hit save and let's try to do this again. Let's open the console just to see if something happens. I'm going to say veto at expo.io. Continue. Okay. And it seems that we need to install as well React email render. So let's try to do that and see if we can fix this error. Install. Okay. Let's restart the server and I'm going to refresh the app. Let's try this again. Okay, there we go. Let's continue and we're done. We got this success equal to true in the console. So let's go back to recent. And just like that, now I'm able to see me in here. Cool. So at this point, we are ready to deploy this application and we can use EAS hosting for that. I'm going to be using the EAS CLI to deploy this application. And the first thing that we need to do is export the web version of this project. So I'm going to say MPX Expo Export Platform Web. This is going to generate a dist folder with the website and API routes. So as you can see here in the logs, it only detected one API. And then we also have some static routes, which is our website at the end of the day. Now, one thing that I want to do, very important thing that I want to do before deploying this to production, I want to change the base URL of our application. In this case, it's not going to be the local host anymore. It's going to be HTTPS slash slash. And I'm going to be using an expo domain. You can get a, an expo domain just by deploying your project. And I don't have this domain yet, but I'm going to call it recent example.expo.app. Okay, so after you updated your environment variable with the deployed URL, we can go ahead and deploy it. So let's export this again since I changed the environment variable and I'm going to pass the clear flag. This is just to make sure that we don't have any cache data. Okay, and now we are ready to deploy. To deploy, we can simply use the EAS CLI by saying EAS deploy and then passing the flag prod for production. So before running this command, if you don't have EAS installed, you can install it by saying npm install globally EAS CLI and hit enter. 
This will make sure that you are using the latest version if you already have it installed. And if you don't have it installed, it's going to install it for you. Great. So after that, I can run commands like EAS-V to see the version that I'm using and EAS who am I to check my accounts. At the moment, I'm logged in as Beto at Expo and you can run commands like EAS login to login with your Expo credentials. Cool. So after that, you are ready to run EAS deploy production and hit enter. Now, since this is the first time that I'm doing this in this brand new project, it's going to ask me if I want to create a new project on EAS. So I'm going to say yes. Now it's asking me which domain I want to use. So I'm going to say Beto recent example, and then it's going to give me the domain .expo.app for free. So let's hit enter. All right. And my app is now deployed. Okay. So now that this is deployed, let's start the server again. And I'm going to refresh the app. Let's keep this open. Great. Now keep in mind that we are pointing to the production based URL. I'm going to add a different email. Let's press continue. And if I go to recent, I can see that I have uh, a new user now working on production, which is awesome. Just a couple of things to notice here is that the API key that we are using to communicate with recent is completely secure on the server side and our client side Expo application is communicating with this API route. And then we create the contact. Okay. So from here you can start sending emails, but before you can do that, you actually need to have a domain so that you can send emails from that email. But once you have your domain, you can just go to broadcast, create a new email in here. You can select the audience general. It's the only one I have so far. And of course you need to have here your email that you're going to be using with the verified domain. And that's it. We learned how to securely add context to our audiences using recent and Expo EAS hosting. In case you haven't already, go and try out recent. It's really cool. They provide a great developer experience and deploying with EAS hosting is just a breeze. I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.